Ty, come out. <gasps> I need you to come more. I hate Please, this. Please, get closer. I hate this. <laughs> the audio has to pick you up. Come on. Hey sisters, it's Tali, your registered dietitian and fellow sister. Today, I'm going to be taking you through my day and showing you the best ways to fight fatigue with PCOS. You'll also get to see how I keep my energy up while I explore Barcelona. You'll discover what causes fatigue, how PCOS contributes, and what PCOS-friendly lifestyle changes you can make to pull you out of that brain fog. Now let's go! Women with PCOS are two times more likely to struggle with sleep and 80% of us struggle with daytime fatigue. If you struggle with this too, go ahead and like this video to say bye-bye to constant fatigue. First, we need to understand what the signs of fatigue are and what could be causing it. If you've struggled with anxiety, weight gain, moodiness, you might have a bit of adrenal fatigue. So this is when the adrenal gland, which sits right on top of your kidneys, is pumping out a bunch of stress hormones. Whether it's from psychological stress, like being stressed at school, or it's from physical stress, like not working out enough or not eating enough calories. This can be stressful on your adrenals and they can burn out. And then what happens? You don't have energy in the morning because your stress hormones aren't high enough and you can't sleep at night because your stress hormones aren't low enough. The struggle is real, sisters. To see if you struggle with adrenal fatigue or to find out what type of PCOS you might have, you can take the quiz in my bio to find out. All right, so the other common PCOS type that causes fatigue is insulin resistance. And this is when you're not harnessing energy from the food you're eating properly so that you don't have enough energy and you feel fatigued because your blood sugar drops. And then it goes back up when you eat and then it drops again. The struggle is real because you can feel hangry, you can feel fatigued, and it is just awful and anxious as well. Now, one of the most common PCOS types that people struggle with when it comes to fatigue is hypothyroidism. Now, you really wanna have your thyroid checked to make sure to rule this out because hypothyroidism can cause extreme fatigue as well as hair loss and you want to know if you're struggling with that. All right, so let's get started with my first tip. Try to go gluten and dairy free for at least 30 days to see how you feel. Gluten and dairy, they could be doing a number on your PCOS symptoms and causing chronic inflammation and it's really worth figuring out whether you're sensitive to them. Did you know studies also show that when you're sensitive to gluten, every time you eat gluten, your body is attacking the gluten molecule, which through something called molecular mimicry, looks like the thyroid molecule. And because they look the same, your body is also attacking your thyroid molecule. So every time you eat gluten, if you're sensitive to it, your body's also attacking your thyroid, and it could be making your Hashimoto's or your hypothyroid even worse. So I'd say it's definitely worth giving it a shot for at least 30 days. In Barcelona, I never thought I would come across so many gluten-free options, especially this gluten-free bakery. They have gluten-free baguettes, they have gluten-free pastries, they have all kinds of gluten-free options for me. I was literally walking home from the gym one day and I came across it and it was mind-blowing. Even though it has a bunch of great gluten-free options, I still suggest eating gluten and dairy-free from Whole Foods because if you mostly rely on these processed items, it can also ramp up inflammation. So I try to stay away from the sugar options and choose the naturally occurring gluten-free foods. All right, my second tip is to try to keep your stress hormones stable throughout the day. 
So that includes your workout. Sometimes when we work out for PCOS, we think that working out really hard is what we need to do to burn calories. And we might even feel addicted to that adrenaline rush we get from having an intense workout. But if you're crashing afterwards and you feel super fatigued, then it's probably not something that's right for you. Now that goes for everything else throughout the day. Breaking up your day, taking some rest, meditating, doing things like that to bring your stress hormones back down can be super helpful. So one thing I love to do while we're here in Barcelona is go on a walk. I love to walk after our meals, I love to walk to our, the restaurants that we're gonna eat at, and it's great for blood sugar control, and it's great for energy. But you can even overdo walking. Like you can be walking a lot, uphill, downhill, all day going on an intense hike, and now that is considered something to evaluate. How do you feel afterwards? Are you super fatigued? Do you need to rest? Or are you totally fine? It's good to check in with yourself to see how you're doing. Take for example our trip to Madrid for my 30th birthday. We had so much fun, but we were walking a lot, a lot, a lot, and I had to take a break afterwards. We were walking so much, like 20,000 steps a day, but it wasn't just a relaxing 20,000 steps. It was uphill, downhill, winding through busy crowds on the Gran Via, climbing up the stairs to get to the top of the Palacio de Siebles and moseying around museums like the Palacio Real de Madrid. Trust me, I was tired afterwards. Cutting out caffeine. I know. I know. You might be reaching for the coffee mug three, four times a day to keep yourself awake so that you don't have daytime fatigue. But I'm telling you, the caffeine is contributing to the endless cycle of fatigue. Every time you drink coffee, your cortisol shoots up and then it shoots back down. And then you need more coffee and then it shoots up and shoots back down. And it's this endless cycle of needing more and more caffeine. Now, some people metabolize coffee better than others. You really wanna do a self-evaluation to see if it's giving you anxiety or jitters or if you're really depending on coffee just so you can get through the day. Because those spikes in cortisol, you're overproducing those stress hormones and it's gonna leave you to feel super fatigued at the end. And not to mention, getting poor, poor quality sleep. So choose decaf. This is espresso. It's pretty delicious. Tastes the same. Number four, make sure you eat a high protein breakfast. A high protein breakfast is just the thing you need in the morning to keep your energy up and your blood sugar stable throughout the day. This is prime time, so let me show you what I like to have. So in the morning, I typically eat either smoked salmon or eggs. Sirak makes a bomb omelet with some sweet onion. And I also love to have dairy-free cream cheese or avocado with some smoked salmon. Smoked salmon is great because it has lots of omega-3 fats and it's anti-inflammatory. I like to buy the wild-caught smoked salmon, not the farm-raised. Okay, time for our last tip. My fifth tip is to get some good sunlight in the morning to really pump up your cortisol and give you some energy. And also, go on a walk in the evening because while the sun is setting, the rays of the sun will help pump up your melatonin and bring down your cortisol so that you can get better quality sleep at night. So instead of staring at your phone, go out for a little walk and you'll find that you'll sleep much more soundly that evening. So with that being said, those are my five tips to help fight fatigue with PCOS. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get more tips on how to manage PCOS, especially while we travel throughout Europe. <laughs>